Good morning, church. Those of you who are with us, it's so good to see your faces. And those of you who are joining from home, I'm so glad that you can be with us too. Would you join us as we sing and offer our God the praise that he is worthy of? And for those of you who are here, please stand. Please raise your arms. Please sing out. In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of To reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost. To redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus for our sake you died. Anybody thankful for that this morning? Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. But he didn't stay on the cross, did he? And the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath, till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe, for the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint. 
by his blood and in his name in his freedom i am free for the love of jesus christ who has resurrected me come on sing it out praise the father praise the son Father, we love that whole story that kind of zooming out and seeing your work in all of history. But Lord, we're not just seeking to remember things of the past. We're seeking you right now, right here. And we want you to move in us. So church, would you pray this prayer with me? And seek God, we welcome you. Welcome him here. Welcome him to have his way. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcome in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcome in this place. Is that your desire this morning? Sing that again. We welcome you. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcome in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcome in this. Let every heart, let every heart adore, let every soul away. Almighty God of love, be welcome in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love. Be welcome in this place. Amen. Amen. You can have a seat. So good to be together again. I uh, just want to let you know a few things that are coming up. First of all, I hope you've been continuing with your Lent challenge, uh, Lent 2021, Experiencing Jesus. Um, we're still, we're, we're kind of coming to the end of that, but there's still a chance for you to try some new things, take some steps to experience Jesus right now in your daily lives, your, your week. Um, all kinds of things on that paper. You can find that online. It's called Experiencing Jesus Lent 2021. Even if you haven't started yet, it's not too late. You've got a couple weeks. Uh, just take a few steps on there of some ways that, some new ways, some creative ways that you can connect with God and, and draw near to Him and experience Him. Easter week is coming. And we've got a few things that we're looking forward to that we want to, even in the midst of all that's going on with this pandemic, 
uh, we're going to celebrate Easter. Amen? So we've got a few ways that we're going to do that. First of all, on Thursday, we're going to have a special Holy, Sir, Holy Thursday communion time right here in person in the sanctuary. And we'll let you know more details about that. On Friday, we've got a very special virtual Good Friday event hosted by the Good Friday Men's Breakfast. Um, and that's going to include uh, some people from Urban Promise, got a few speakers, got a choir. It's going to be a really great time. You're not going to want to miss that. So look for that link coming out soon. And then, of course, Easter Sunday morning, we're going to be right here in person again, celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. So that's going to be a great morning. You don't want to miss that, uh, either in person here or on virtual live stream, as always. One last thing we want to let you know um, there's a funeral for Kathy Siri that's happening here um, on Friday. It was uh, put out some information that it was on Thursday, but that had to change some things going on with the family. So that is this coming Friday at 11 o'clock right here in our sanctuary. Um, and of course, all the COVID protocols will be in place as usual. But let's, uh, let's, let's pray one more time and just uh, go to our God. Father, we do welcome you. We're excited that you are here. <laughs> we are thankful that you are right here with us in this room, in this place. And Lord, for all of those who are sitting in their living rooms or driving in the car, uh, wherever they're listening in, you are right there with them too. And we welcome you to have your way to be God, to change us, to heal us, to shape us, to break us down and build us up and whatever it is that you want to do in us today so that as we go into our week, we will be more ready, more uh, listening more closely for the things that you want to do through us. God, receive our praise, receive our hearts, receive our love as we worship you today. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to keep on worshiping, singing Blessed Assurance.
that sound good? Welcome to Kids Corner. That's better. And we're delighted to have our very own Christian soldier in his armor, the armor of God, this morning. And as we think back, last week we talked about having the shoes that are uh, fitted for readiness and the belt of truth for the importance of reading and knowing God's word and the breastplate of righteousness, the importance of doing what is right. The next piece of armor is the helmet of salvation. The purpose of the helmet, whether it's a soldier's helmet, a football player, or a construction worker, is to protect the brain from injury. You need to wear the helmet of salvation so that you can keep your mind alert and stay tuned to God's voice. Your mind is your control center, and you can hear other people's voices, their opinions, thoughts, and suggestions, and they often drown out what God is saying to you. God is trying to speak truth into your mind, and we need to listen to him because we need to remember that when Jesus came and took away our sin, and he lives in us now, that's salvation. That's the beginning. God wants us to keep trusting, keep learning, to use your brain to discover how much God loves you. And, you, and wants him, he wants us to obey him. Don't listen to Satan's lies. Then comes the shield of faith. I borrowed this shield from my neighbor Jack. We have fun sometimes just playing sword fights. The Bible says that take up the shield of faith so you can put it out the flaming arrows of the devil. In Bible times, the shields were big enough they could hide behind. The soldier would crouch down behind it when the enemy was shooting arrows at him. Faith is believing in God and telling the truth, is telling the truth, and he is, and trusting him to do what he says even when we don't understand it. But we know that God is in control. Satan will send arrows of doubt and fear, but put on your shield of faith and don't let him get you. Remember, God's got this. And the last piece of armor is the sword. Now, the sword also belongs to our neighbor Jack, and he just got a new one last night. And he said, he brought it over to me at my house, and he said, Mrs. Dorn, please be careful. And I said, we will take good care of it, Jack. I just thanked him for being willing to give up and share something so precious to him. But the sword is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the Bible. All other pieces of armor protect you, but the sword is the only offensive weapon made to attack the enemy. It's important to read and know what God's word says, and more important to use it to encourage yourself and others. The Bible says we should hide God's word in our heart. Take some verses and begin to memorize them. Recently, I have been doing that. This old brain doesn't work as quickly as it used to, but I have determined to use it more. Satan will try to take God's word and twist it and make you doubt. Satan will try to take God's word and make you doubt. So it's important to know what God is saying and pray for God's spirit to help you. And the devil will run away. Know that God does not dress you in the armor. You have to dress yourself. The armor has been completely supplied for you. Your victory has been completely provided. So when you suit up in the armor of God, you have the power to defeat the enemy and live in victory. Christ has got you when you trust him. Remember, God's side has already won. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for providing the armor to stand against the tricks of the devil. Help us to put it on and stand faithful to you. Amen. 
I have a little song, I always have a little song, that goes with the armor of God. Some of you may know it, but here's how it goes. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot at the artillery. I may never zoom or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot in the artillery. I may never zoom or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. God bless you. Don't forget to put on the armor of God. I didn't realize we were implementing new church security here. It's uh, a little intimidating. Good job, Ethan and, and Carol. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, what a great, um, what a great, that was a, you realize that was, I think, our first children's sermon series, right? We do sermon series, but that was a children's sermon series on the armor of God. I, I think it's a wonderful idea. I think we need to keep doing more of that. Um, but... As Carol and Ethan demonstrated that the sword of the Spirit is the, is the Word of God, we're going to get into the Word of God right now. Our scripture this morning comes from Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. And it's the story of Bartimaeus. And I think before we read the scripture, we need to remember that this happens right after Jesus um, and his followers were leaving Jericho, before they came into Jerusalem. So this is right before Jesus is about to enter into, um, ultimately, his death and crucifixion, right? So here's what it says. Then they came to Jericho, and uh, Jesus, uh, as Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. And I just want to encourage you before we go to prayer that just like Bartimaeus, as, as Bartimaeus was trying to reach Jesus, to call out to Jesus, to get Jesus to notice him, he was discouraged by those around him. Maybe we, as we're trying to find Jesus, as we're trying to, to call out to him, to get him to hear us, maybe there are people around us that are discouraging us, that are saying it's not worth it. You shouldn't be doing that. You can't do that in that situation. I want to encourage you to do what Bartimaeus did. He shouted out all the more. And guess what? Jesus heard him. Jesus heard him. He called to him. And then he asked him a question. And I think it's important, just like Bartimaeus, we don't assume that Jesus knows what we want. He does. But it's important for us to demonstrate our faith to actually tell Jesus, Jesus, this is what I want. And then wait for him to give you what's best for you, whether it's what you want or not. I, there's a lot to be learned from this scripture, and um, I'm, I'm really excited to hear what Pastor Sam has to say about it. <clears throat> and um, before we do that, though, let's, let's just go to prayer right now. We have a lot of, a lot of people who just need prayer this week. So let's pray. Lord Father, 
we once again thank you for the opportunity to come into your house, Lord. And whether that means here in this building or whether that means <clears throat> from couches at home, <clears throat> we are still part of the same family. We are still part of your family and your church. It's not about this building, Lord, but we are thankful that we can gather together, whether here or at home, and praise you, Lord, and seek you, and tell you how much we love you, <clears throat> and tell you how much we thank you for the sacrifice you made for us. Lord, that's an honor, and it's a privilege, and we don't take it lightly. Lord, we just, <clears throat> we offer to you all of the people that are on our prayer list, Lord. Lord, Kathy Siri and her family, <clears throat> or the family of Kathy Siri, we just pray that you'll comfort them, Lord, and be with them throughout this week as, as they approach the funeral on Friday. Linda Nuha and Connie Farling are facing surgeries come in the coming weeks, Lord. Mike Malloy with medical challenges <clears throat> that have yet to be diagnosed, Lord. Um, Preston O'Brien, who just needs your touch, he and his family, Lord. And so many other people on our prayer list, Lord. Lord, we lift them all up to you. Lord, comfort them, heal them. But most of all, make your presence known to them, Lord. Help them to realize in a very real way, Lord, that you love them and you care for them. And Lord, we just offer ourselves to you this morning. Show us your word in a new, fresh way. Reveal more of yourself to us, Lord, so that we, so that we can share more of you with others. Lord, thank you. We love you and we praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. I can stay still, maybe. It'll be your challenge today. There we go. Thanks, buddy. Testing. There we go. Here, let me just pull this off. That way we'll get confused. There we go. You never know what we, we get to, we we do in the morning. Hey, it's great to be here. You know, um, as I was listening to the, the songs this morning, listening to uh, Carol's message, my heart was just kind of taken in by God's presence and seeing you here this morning, and I know many are, are watching today and throughout this week. We're in this series, Experiencing Jesus, and this morning, the, the, the title is why I read the scripture over and over again. Then I asked, Lord, what is it that, I, that, that you want me to, to get from this? And, and there was this, this phrase that I, I saw many years ago, and it just kind of kept coming back. There's new reality in sight. Bartimaeus, blind all his life, and yet when he heard that Jesus was coming, And uh, I, I, get, I get excited when I think about that. Not only was that happening many years ago, but when Jesus' presence is in the room, it happens today. And I want us to reflect this morning that uh, one of the things that uh, I, I love about Bartimaeus is when he heard that, one of the things that, that he did is he planned, 
I want to see Jesus. And so as we look at this passage this morning, in Mark 10, 51, we see that Jesus then, after Bartimaeus made his way to him, he asked him this one key question. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But the question which I want us to think about all through this message this morning is, what do you want me to do? Once Bartimaeus got there with Jesus, I'm not sure if, if Bartimaeus was even ready for that question, but he asked that question, what do you want me to do for you, Bartimaeus? In the midst of the crowd and, and, and those who were distractors, or, or I guess we've heard of people call it the naysayers, and those who were just trying to kind of pull him down, and Jesus asked him that question. You know, think about it for a second. Jesus, the, the Messiah, Jesus who was doing all these amazing things, who can transform life, not as a genie, but as a savior, asked him the most important question of his life, what do you want me to do? Let me ask you this morning, what would your response be? And as we come to worship today, I think we all come maybe in different ways. I mean, after a year of, 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 of the pandemic and all the things that are going on in our world, our minds sometimes can be just kind of in a swirl, as someone said to me this past week. I, I think some come in wonder. Some come in praise. I think some are coming in a neutral state saying, well, I, I want to come that way, but I'm not sure if I'm there yet. Others come from a very difficult, challenged place, maybe just not sure. Faith has been tested, or maybe some come from not a faith at all. But no matter where we come from, we're coming from a place of journey. Would you agree? And as we come, one of the things I think, no matter where we come, I want to establish one thing. We all need Jesus. How many believe that this morning? See, here's the thing. One of the things that Barnabas knew is that he was discouraged. And he needed this Savior. He needed Jesus. And, and, and he was dealing with all these issues, and he needed Jesus to intervene. This week, I have a good friend who's pastoring down in Cape May. He's been through a really difficult year, and somewhere in 221, 2021, he just found out he has prostate cancer, and he's leading this church, and he's had all other types of, of, of physical problems. And then this week, his daughter has twins, uh, has been pregnant with twins, and she came early, 28 weeks, she came with the twins, and he asked for prayer, and he said, after they were delivered, now they're two and a half pounds each. And he asked for prayer. And then he put on the bottom of the prayer, I don't know, but I know God answers prayer. That was it. See, it doesn't matter how long we've known Jesus. It doesn't matter if we're just beginning in the journey or if we're with him all our life. There's a journey. Catch this thought today. There's always a new reality of Jesus in sight, no matter where we are in the journey. And the setting of this story was Jesus and his disciples, they, they arrived in Jericho on their way to Jerusalem. And they know that Jesus is going to be, well, Jesus knew he was going to be arrested and tortured and crucified. And three days later, he's going to be raised from the dead. And the Holy Spirit's going to come to be our comforter. And, and, and guess what? That's what we have today. Amen? But Jericho is one of the oldest and, and, and continues to be inhabited cities in the world. It's located right there by the Jordan and Dead Sea. And why it's so important is that people would travel there. And so Jesus was right there where all the people were. Jesus didn't go the back streets. Jesus went right where the people are. I'm saying this for a very important reason. Church, we need to be where people are. Jesus' presence needs to be where people are. Jesus encountered this blind man. Will read the story. It's so powerful. 
I mean, there's blind people around us all the time. I know we, we have one that we love so much, Murray, in our congregation, don't we? And, and, and you know what? I love her spirit. I love her sensitivity. I, I, I think of Ken Miedema, a good, a, a amazing Christian song. But you know, this morning, we sang Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, Fanny Crosby, she, you know, she wrote over 8,000 hymns. She wrote that hymn. And she wrote all types of hymns, like Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. Um, she wrote, uh, I Am Thine, O Lord. She wrote so many different hymns. And, and she, she wrote these hymns, and she was blind. God used her in a powerful way. Of course, she liked Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder. I love watching Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles. You know, I could tell you another story, but I'm just going to keep going this morning. Of a man who, who challenged a guy to a golf, Dave, you would love this, challenged a guy to a golf outing, and at the end, it's a famous story, and the, the guy said, oh, it's a famous golfer, and at the end, you know what he told him? He said, I'll even challenge you at midnight. Yeah, he was blind. But the amazing thing about Jesus is this. He reminds us how he cares for us, no matter what our situation is, no matter where we're going in life, no matter what our deepest needs and longings are, he has our future in mind. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. He has your future in mind. And Jesus knew Bartimaeus, but never touched him. He just spoke the word, and Bartimaeus believed, and he says, your faith has healed you. You know, there's a couple observations I'd just like to bring to your attention. First, what God has, what God has for us is He has you in mind. And, and He has a plan for all our lives. First, circumstances require we begin to believe even when we cannot see the outcome. Sometimes we think we have to wait for all the circumstances to be perfect, for, for you know, our outcomes to be realized, but not with Jesus. I don't know about you, but a lot of times my circumstances are not perfect. And that's where it says in verse 36, or 46, Then they came to Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, this blind man Bartimaeus was sitting by the roadside begging, and when he had heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. See, faith believes even when we can't see. Bartimaeus could not see, but he knew Jesus was coming, and he called out. He turned and asked someone, what's going on? And they said, hey, Jesus, that Nazarene, he's coming. I love that phrase. Jesus, that Nazarene, he's coming. And as he did, he was changing lives along the way. Somehow, Faith was being built everywhere he goes. Let me ask you a question this morning. What helps you in building your faith of what can God do in your life? Right now, I know God is, is working in my life and in this church in a brand new journey. I know as I share with you that God is calling us to a new mission, a new place, um, coming uh, in, in June, in July, that area of timetable. I know for sure that 13 years ago, God called us here on a real faith venture. God showed us a rainbow, and I've told you that before, but let me remind us that that rainbow wasn't just for me, it was for all of us. And that rainbow was that God has a purpose for this church here on Park in Dayton. How many believe that this morning? Amen. Let me say that again. God has a purpose for us here on Park in Dayton to reach Collingswood for Jesus Christ. How many believe that this morning? Amen. Uh, waking up. <laughs> but as Lisa and I have been praying and seeking the Lord for our future and for your future, one of the things I know that God is going to send someone new. I've been calling because the Lord has been trying. 
God's going to call a, a Joshua, someone who's going to continue the journey. And I don't know what it looks like. You don't want to look, know what it looks like. But God is still going to bring someone that's going to help us here continue the faith. Continue the work. And God has a new work for me. I'm not even sure what all it's going to look like. But I know there's a work that he's calling me to. And that's where it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by what? We walk by faith, not by, by sight. Like Bart, none of us have ever seen Jesus with our physical eyes, but we've experienced him. I like the old evangelist said, it's better felt than told. The second thing is, there are many voices that discourage our encounter with Jesus, aren't there? That's going to happen to all of us. But here's what overcomes. Faith overcomes it all. You believe that this morning? Let your faith overcome it all. It did with, it did with Bartimaeus. It says here, many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But guess what? It says, he shouted all the more. Son of David, have what? Mercy on me. The Bible says many rebuked him, and, but shouted. That word shouted is the word krizan in the Greek. You know what that means? It means crazy. <laughs> it means he said, hey, he shouted. He went, wow, have mercy on me, Lord. They told him to shut up. Instead, they reprimanded him. They raked him over the coals. They tried to discourage him. But his faith said no. He resisted them. Family, I want to tell you, we need to have that kind of faith. We need to resist whenever we feel our faith is leading us in the journey and allow God to guide us and lead us every step of the way. When the crowds told him to be silent, he shouted to the Lord, Jesus, Son of David. Now see, here's the one thing I love it. He didn't go after them. He just fixed his eyes upon Jesus, who was what? The author and what? The perfecter of what? Our faith. Isn't that awesome? See, in the early days, in the turn of the century, Methodists and Nazarenes, they got excited about God. In fact, they were called shouting Methodists. Yeah, anyone remember hearing that? And they were called shouting Nazarenes. And here's the cool thing. They didn't shout at each other. They shouted to him. They weren't snoozers. They were shouters. They wanted to be in his presence. The Bible says in Psalm 98, 4, shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Psalm 100 says, shout joyful to the Lord all the earth. See, when we begin to focus on him, we begin to say, Lord, this is your deal. Lord, I, I have my life. Lord, have this service. Lord, have this church. Lord, take this pastor. Lord, take this denomination. Lord, we don't have the money, but you have all the money. Amen? Amen. Lord, you want us to do something great in Collingswood? Lord, show us how to do it. You're in charge. Glory to God. We love you, Lord. I love, there's an old saying from a man named Phineas F. He says, I want to be under the spout where God's love, presence, and glory comes out. That's where I want to live, too. And there's nothing wrong with us saying, we love you, Lord. Glory to God. Even with Amen. Which means, that be so. Yes. Discovering God's plan also. Third observation. Discovering God's plan requires some things to change. There needs to be a change. Sometimes it requires repentance. It means change. And a simple faith. See, Jesus stopped and called him and said, So, they call the blind man, and he says, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. So he threw his, 
his cloak aside, and he jumped to his feet. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked. There's that question again. What do you want me to do for you? And Jesus asked him, and the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. <laughs> I want to see. And, and faith admits a need to be changed. How many believe that this morning? Faith admits, Lord, I can't do this, but Lord, will you show me? Rabbi, I want to see. It's kind of funny. Jesus asked him that when he knows he's blind. Jesus asked the same question to the paralyzed man. Every day laying there on the pool, he says, do you want to get well? Bart had a pretty simple life. He got accustomed to sitting along the roadside getting the handouts. But then Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? See, Bart could have said, can you give me the name of a good eye doctor? <laughs> but he just said it in just a short prayer. I want to see. Lord, I want to see. See, the best prayers are, are the short ones. Lord, here it is. I want to see. I want to see you. Jesus stands before us to say, what do you want me to do for, uh, for you? We can just say, I want to see. Maybe, maybe there's some, he, he wants to get right to the need of our lives. Can I help you? Lord, here's my issues. I'm addicted to, I have a pride problem. I want to be pure. Maybe I have an anger problem, bitterness, gossip. I want to change, change my heart, oh God. Make it like yours. And the last thought of this morning is this. Discovering God's plan, guess what it requires? Not only a change, but also a commitment. Amen? Amen. To follow Jesus with this new reality in sight. See, I want to tell you something. Spiritual blindness can be more dangerous than physical blindness. And it attacks us, and we don't even know it. Bart knew his life has changed, and following Jesus was so clear to him. Sometimes you always don't know what the next step is. Jesus recognized another that 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 physical that 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 spiritual blindness that was going on. And we've been talking about this over the last three or four weeks. He spoke some of the harshest words he ever spoke to the Pharisees because he realized the blindness that was going on. And he said, "Leave them, the Pharisees. They are blind guides." And if if the blind leads the blind, both will fall in the pit, he says in Matthew 15, 14. And that's why we have to work extra hard to be in the truth by his love and his spirit. I love how Jesus lived his life so everyone could see, not just hear his words. So when he said right before his death, as John records, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And then he goes on to say, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And no one comes to the Father but through me. I'm sure the disciples could buy it, but they were still trying to figure it out. But that's the word of truth for us today. Don't let your hearts be troubled. He is the way. He's the truth. He is life. But we can miss the amazing presence of Jesus if we get caught up in everything else. Spiritual blindness is so easy. In the other area of blindness is we can miss the God potential things that, uh, in others. And I could go on and share a story there, but I'm not going to this morning because I just feel like I want to key in to this. It's so easy to be blind to God's purpose for our lives. When life gets difficult, busy, challenging, it can be hard to hear God's voice. How many believe that this morning? You have your eyes in your head, but you don't know you have eyes in your heart. In just a few moments, um, we're going to hear the song, Open the Eyes of My Heart, by Paul Belouge. And it kind of, in my mind, it kind of goes with the, 
Ephesians 1.18, where I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know what? The hope to which you're called. You know, in, in the, up till the 1940s, all architectural drawings were called blueprints because the chemical process used to do that. Today we call them blueprints, but even though now they change it and they're really white prints. <laughs> There's even a digital process too. Um, so they're really not blueprints or white prints. There's now a lot of digital things going on. But what they're used for is, is how to map out what's going on. And I want to challenge you this morning. God has a blueprint for your life. God has something in your life he wants you to do. He wants you to take care of you. He, he's, he's mapping it out. Do you see it? Do you know it? Can you see it this morning? Have you discovered? And we only do it when we open the eyes of our heart. Because that's why he created us. It wasn't just to go to school, make, make money, and, and retire, and just wait to die. But God has a plan for a personal relationship with him. He, he, he wants us to live a different life, different values, different priorities. And he wants us to have hope in him. God's purpose for life is to know him and to make him known to others. There are blind people all around us that we need to experience the joy in us so that we can share the joy with others. Do you believe that this morning? Many of you know, and you see, I, I, I used to wear contacts a lot, and now I'm getting older, it's harder. But I wear these glasses. Why? Because I have a sight deficiency. My eye doctor knows exactly what I need so I can see my world more clearly. And you know, when I tried these glasses on last, I just got them this past year, wow, my world changed in an instant. <laughs> and Jesus said these powerful words to Bart in an instant, if anyone, that uh, uh, he, to go. He just said the words. But I love the words that Paul said, if anyone being Christ, the old is gone, the new has come, his life has changed. And I want to tell you this morning, family, and those who are listening in, Jesus changed my life the same way. And that's what we need this morning, to know that Jesus can change your life too. Jesus gave Bart a new purpose for living. And when Jesus called him, the Bible says he cast his cloak aside and jumped to his feet. There was a beggar's cloak would often have pockets inside and he could, he could put all his food and all his identity in there. But you know what? When Jesus called him, he threw it aside. And after he was healed, he immediately followed Jesus using his newfound vision to participate in the work that Jesus was doing. And you know, with even the smallest amount of faith, God can do the greatest amount of work. And I'm going to ask our team to come. They're going to sing. We're going to pray. They're going to sing. But the only thing he brought to Jesus was his need. There's a line in an old song that says, Nothing in my hand I bring, only to the cross I cling. What is it you're holding on to today? Are you ready? There's a new reality in sight. No matter where you are in your journey today, I want to invite you to come to Jesus. Share your joys, your needs, trust him. It makes all the difference. We can trust him with our concerns, our future, our lives. The greatest thing that Jesus wants to do is to give us a clearer picture of him so we can take that opportunity. Jesus is still the answer for our anxiety, for our needs, for our fears, for our failures, because you know why? He is faithful. Jesus loves it when his people seek him with faith. So what are you asking Jesus to do for you today? Would you seek him with me right now? And then we're going to sing. Lord Jesus, I thank you today that I really believe that no matter where we are in our lives, we can journey with you. We can walk in faith. Even when we don't know, God, how you want to do the miracle, we know that you still can do things that are exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask, think, pray, or imagine. As we're in this sanctuary this morning, I pray for each one and those who are listening in. 
All we need to do is to trust you with our concerns, our future, our very lives, is simply surrender. That's what Bartimaeus did. We can do that too. So hear our prayer this morning. And as you fill us with yourself, may we receive hope and joy. Open our eyes, Lord, open the eyes of our hearts so we might see you today in a fresh and new way. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. You know, I, I got to be honest. Uh, when I was preparing the songs for this week, I was sensing, like, open the eyes of my heart, and I just kind of was resisting that a little bit. It just to sing, open the eyes of my heart after we talk about a blind guy getting healed seems a little cliche. <laughs> um, but I just kept sensing that in my heart, so I planned it. And as I've been listening and thinking about it a little bit more today. I think this is why, I think this is why it's important that here's Bartimaeus, a guy whose eyes couldn't see, but when Jesus asked him the question, and I do love that question, Sam, what do you want me to do for you? To give him the dignity, what do you want? When Jesus asked him that question, even though his, his eyes were closed, I think his answer revealed the fact that the eyes of his heart were wide open. And his faith was big. And he was focusing on the important things. And like Sam said, he could have asked for anything. He could, you know, hey, I'm not getting enough money by begging. Can you give me some money? Hey, it would be nice to have a chair to sit on while I'm begging. Could you give me a chair? <laughs> no, he said, I want to see. He was focusing on the biggest thing, the important thing. And I wonder sometimes, you know, all of us who can see with our eyes, are the eyes of our hearts open too? Or do they get closed up? And so I just repeat the question that the Sam has asked. What do you want? The question that Jesus asked. What do you want me to do for you? There's a lot of things we could go for. There's a lot of things we could ask for. A lot of things we could want. And sometimes maybe I think we want the things that aren't the important things. So what is it that we want this morning? Could we say to God today, God... Open the eyes of my heart. Help me to see you. Help me to see what's important. Help me to see the new reality that's in sight, the new reality that you're creating in our lives, in our world, in our church, in, our, in my family. Help me to see you and the things that you want me to see. Would you pray this prayer with us this morning? Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, 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 open our eyes, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see Let's sing that again. I want to see. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of our hearts. 
Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Open the eyes of our hearts. We want to see you. We want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. You know, we don't have the words planned for this, but just sing this little prayer with me too. Open our eyes, Lord, help to see Jesus, to reach out and touch Him, and say that we I'm going to ask you to stand. Don't you love this story this morning? Because Bart was instantly healed and followed Jesus toward Jerusalem and Jesus went to the cross. We know coming off the empty tomb in Acts 2, there were 120 people praying on the day of Pentecost. Jesus went and he's our comforter and guide. Amen. And, and I won't be surprised if when we get to heaven and discover Bart is up there, he's directing traffic because he can see. Because there's a new reality in sight when we follow Jesus. And I love the Hebrew writer, and this is what I'm going to leave you with this morning. Let us keep looking to Jesus, chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. Let us keep looking to Jesus, for He is the one who started this journey of faith, and He is the one who completed the journey of faith. And He paid no attention to the shame of the cross. He suffered there because of joy He was looking forward to. And then He sat down at the right hand of the throne, and He made it through the attacks by sinners. So think about Him. Then you won't get tired, and you won't lose hope. Amen? And may his presence go with us this week. No matter where we go or what we do, may we bring that hope and that joy because of him. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. It's been a joy to be with you today. God bless you and have a great week in him.